Yeah. I put on the recording. All right. So uh, want to go ahead and get started? Yeah, let's get started. All right. So what's up, everybody? Uh, Brian Rhodes here. We got a special guest tonight, our creator of the Get Fit Mining slash Move Quest on the new branding. Uh, her, man, it, I just don't even know where to start. This has been phenomenal. I've been on Zoom about 16, 17 hours a day for the past 30 days because I'm seeing a shift that I've never seen in this industry with cryptocurrency and then health and wellness, you know, so I, I want to bring her on. But before I do, I'm going to share a short little video for you guys. And then she's going to kind of uh, bring a lot of heat and a lot of information to so maybe bring some questions, drop them in the chat. And then as as the as the creator Lynette gets done, maybe we can read some of those questions to her to make it go a little bit smoother and a little bit faster. So she's phenomenal at asking those or uh, answering those questions in a so I'm going to get started here with a quick little video, something that she shared in the last Zoom. So I want to let me know you guys see that. Okay. And I click the three dots, optimize. We look, we look good right here. All right. Can I get a thumbs up from, if you hear it, Manny or David or Yashi? Yes. This is incredible. So, you know, I, I don't even know where to start. This is so exciting. My brain is is just going at a million miles a minute. And, you know, I'm just going to bring Lynette on. Lynette, if if you can make her co-host, because I want her to share the screen and kind of yeah, go. she over, is co-host. All right. To go over some of the, you know, maybe do a little presentation for Lynette like you did earlier and go over some of the amazing features that this this project has and this coin has because there's there's never been a coin out there that what we have with an evolution contract added to it and what is happening because people are just waiting for the pump and dump but this is literally going to change the industry and i'll let lynette re give the new uh phrase to what it, it's actually going to do a little bit later so lynette thank you very much for coming on tonight this is a fantastic team with Manny, Yashi, and and uh, David, like these guys are bringing in people from all over the world. They're going right to Omega, which is the most powerful miners that we have because that's they see the vision and they see how smart it is to get as many of these MQT tokens as possible. So thank you guys for all you do, and I appreciate you guys. You guys are learning so fast. And, and Lynette, go ahead. I'm out of here. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'll just give you guys a little bit of background on myself. So. I um, owned uh, my own pet supply stores, grooming salons, boarding, kenneling facilities, and doggy daycares. I did that for 25 years, and I had enough of it, and I retired. I sold them. I was done. Um, and then I got bored, so bored. I was 44 years old, and I'm like, okay, now what? Well, I'd already been involved in crypto. Um, I got involved in Bitcoin back in 2000, and I knew absolutely nothing about it and really didn't care to learn much about it, I guess, until... Really, I didn't have anything else to do. And then it became an obsession of mine. Um, and it's pretty much been all I've done um, since probably about, I don't know, 2014, I guess, is when I really, really started deep diving into it. But I had a decent you know, understanding of it. But what I really was driving me crazy was I've gotten involved in projects. Okay, they all made sense, I guess, you know, for what I understood of the crypto space. But I always lost money, always lost money. And the people that created them always took off with the money. And it's like, couldn't figure out why aren't these working? So I had to go back to blockchain and Bitcoin and break it all apart. And all of these projects, you know, should be built like a blockchain. If you're going to build a, a project in the crypto space, use the fundamentals of Bitcoin, right? And so that's why MoveQuest mirrors the tokenomics of Bitcoin. Why try to rewrite the wheel? It works. So why try to rewrite it? You know, do it the right way and then nobody is going to uh, get hurt. Of course, you know, there's people that lose money in crypto that 
that's going to happen. But I didn't want that to happen here. So if you build it right, we took three years to do this. I took six months to map it all out, make sure I had every single piece that needed to be here, have it here. And then I sent it over to my developer and I said, can you do this? He's like, oh my God, you're kidding me, right? And I'm like, nope. And I said, what What do you think we're looking at time-wise? He goes from start to what you got here. He goes two to three years. I'm like, oh my God, you're kidding me. I said, okay, well, let's do it. So we didn't do, there's no investors here. There was no pre-sale here. Everything is paid for, you know, so there's nobody here waiting for a big handout of money because they invested and paid for the development. That's all been paid for and it's done. Um, what we have is a project that's fully decentralized. It's got a full self-funding ecosystem and 90% of the money that comes through this project stays with the project. Okay, that's the ecosystem. Um, if you build a project right, the creator doesn't need more than 10% to pay for developers and for designers and for marketing and for any expenses that are incurred and profit, okay? Um, anything above that is greed. Because when you're talking about cryptocurrency, it is the most life-changing, you know, currency in the world. You get up and you look at any, like I watch Fox, uh, the Fox News in the morning, and what's the first currency they show? Bitcoin. Not the futures, not the Forex stuff, cryptocurrency, you know, because it is. It's a huge market. It's super entwined in our ecosystem. Of course, banks and everything else are involved in it now. So it's not quite as good as it used to be back in the day, but it's the type of thing that is life-changing for a person. You can become debt-free, uh, not have a mortgage, not have car payments and all of that. You just have to understand it. So I wanted to bring something that worked and I've consulted with different project creators and I tell them, this is what you need to do. And they all look at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, okay, forget it. You know what? I'm just going to go do it. And so we did. And three years later, here we are. And so I'm going to just go through a presentation that I showed on the other one. It's just a keynote, a few slides. I'm going to go through that, share it with you guys. And then I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, I think that make it uh, a little easier to understand when I just go right, like right to the exchange. And I can explain to you exactly um, how I keep the whales out, how my algorithms and everything else, um, work so that you're not going to get hurt, uh, in this project. Now, let me make sure I got the right one. So I'm going to play from here. Am I, I'm probably not sharing. Am I, well, let me come back here. I did this the last time too. Everybody's doing these presentations now. I don't have to do them. And so I'm forgetting how to use, I'm forgetting how to use this thing. All right, GetFit Mining, we are um, going to be uh, rebranding into MoveQuest. Why are we doing that? People have asked. Because MoveQuest, you know, it's a gamification. Whoops, let me go back. I wanted to pause this uh, thing here. It's a gamified fitness app. And MoveQuest, to me, it, it was so much easier to brand with the logo and for merchandise and all of that stuff. Um, and I really... I didn't even come up with a name. I don't remember who it was, but somebody, it was either Mike or it might've been Brian or Ken, somebody, we were all on a call one day and they brought up MoveQuest and I'm like, oh, I like it. So we decided that we were going to rebrand um, to MoveQuest and it's been amazing. You guys are going to love it. It doesn't look anything um, like the app today. When we were in beta testing, developers and designers, they're two different types of uh, creators, right? When they're coding. Um, and so to have, to expect a coder to design is the wrong thing to do. And to expect a designer to code, you can't do that either. So we've got an amazing design team and it's going to be mind blowing when you guys see um, the application. Not only that, but it makes it so much easier for people to get set up because it literally walks you right through every step. So it's going to get a lot easier, you guys, to get started in this. It's not going to be as difficult as it is right now. We are a blockchain-based project. We are not a blockchain, but we are built like a blockchain on the same fundamentals. And we combine fitness and cryptocurrency mining. It's called proof of physical activity. We've coined that term, uh, P-O-P-A. So you have like proof of work, proof of stake. We have proof of physical activity. We are 100% decentralized. 
That means that I am not the custodian of anybody's money. I am not managing what you're doing on this application. You're doing it all. Everything is recorded to the blockchain. You don't have to go into a back office and request your money and then hope I send it to you, right? Like all these other projects. You just make a call to the smart contract and the smart contract immediately sends you your money. Everything is done in real time and everything is done instantly. Our entire project is backed by utility. Not only are the tokens utility backed, but so are your miners. With that self-sustaining ecosystem, we had no pre-sale of tokens. There's no token allocation. 200 MoveQuest tokens were used for a liquidity raise before the listing and 100,000 uh, MoveQuest were listed with $100,000 and the token started at $1. When I say there's no token allocation, what that means is that I didn't get X amount of move quests. The developers didn't get any. The designers didn't get any. Customer support, none of our admin, none of our core team. Not one single move quest was allocated. If you do a project the right way, you don't need to do that because the project takes care of itself. And so myself, I have to buy them or I have to mine them just like everybody else. There was no special circumstances um, for anybody and no special rewards given out. MoveQuest, it's a lifestyle. Literally, it works with everything you're already doing. But you're going to find that it challenges you to do more. We've got people that will, I mean, I get them all day long calls and messages. My husband's lost 40 pounds. I've lost 10 pounds. I've lost 30 pounds. And, you know, it's amazing to hear people get so excited about becoming more fit. And it's because the app challenges you to do more. It incentivizes you. The more you move, the more you mine, literally. If you do a little bit of movement, you mine a little bit. And so it's all based on what you put into your uh, physical activity. Users mine crypto using your proof of physical activity. It counts your steps, your distance, your workouts, your calories, and your sleep. So the more steps you take, the more calories you burn, the more distance you go on your walks, your runs, the more time you work out along with a good night's sleep, because that's important for your body to restore itself, the more tokens you're going to mine. It incentivizes that healthy lifestyle through the gamification. It encourages you to stay active while you're mining the crypto rewards, and it's promoting that physical well-being and that financial gain through our unique and innovative approach to fitness. Each day, you record your proof of physical activity to the blockchain. We do not store, we do not save or sell your data. People, they don't believe me, and I tell them all the time, our servers cost less than $25 a month. The only thing that we have on our servers are the images for the DAP and the images for the Web3. That's it. We do not store, save, sell nothing um, of your data. You're literally recording it to the blockchain, and that's it. We don't have it. Um, so once you've submitted that proof of physical activity to the blockchain, you can then claim your mining rewards when that round is complete. So there is a 48 hour expiration on your submissions. That means because of the time zones and time changes, we give everybody the 48 hours to submit that proof of physical activity. Once everybody has done it for those two rounds, then those claims are available, but those never expire. So you can claim your tokens whenever you want to. Once that smart contract knows what those that what that reward distribution is, it never changes. They're always yours until, you know, when you claim them, it sends them right to your wallet. I will tell you, like, we don't have staking here. That's kind of a gray area where the um, SEC is concerned. And so I don't want to step into any gray areas. I want to be very careful, um, you know, with even though I always tell everybody, they ink is still wet on the paper, but. You can kind of use common sense and you know what the SEC is looking for. And by building on the blockchain fundamentals, I just stay clear of any gray area staking is. So what we do to kind of encourage people to hold their tokens is if you claim every day, it's the same fee as if you claimed every 10. So you can claim daily or you can just claim every 10 days. It will cost you for 10 what it would for one. So it saves you money. And that is 10 days that we know those tokens would be held. So it's not staking, but it's kind of a motivator 
for people to hold their tokens for a little while anyway. And why do we stand out? One, we're community driven. I have to tell you the first thing I had to make sure that didn't exist here was the quote unquote pyramid Ponzi scheme that you see with projects that rely on new money coming in to fund their community. We don't use that, okay? When you come into the project, you're going to need your miners and you have to mint those miners. Okay, that's the onboarding part, the launching of, you know, to launch into our ecosystem. And that's where we do pay commission for sharing the app and helping to build the community. But anything that isn't paid out in commission, it goes into a vault. It's returned to the move quest vault, safe, whatever you want to call it, so that they can be mined in the year 2060, meaning we don't burn them. We return them to the vault and they are sitting there for 35 years. So that part, the onboarding of the, of the project, the project doesn't rely on any of that money whatsoever. The project never sells MoveQuest. So that 40%, right now it pays out 60%, that's gonna decrease um, because we want 70% to go back into the vault. We always worry, but we always, not worry, we always, in our algorithms and calculations and the way this app functions, it's about supply and demand. And so you want it to remove more move quests from circulation. And so as, as you're removing it, it's also creating a higher value for those of you who are earning it for sharing um, the project. And Ryan and Mike who are here on this call or any of you that have already been using it, you already know that what you earned yesterday in commissions is probably, especially over the last six to eight weeks, not only did it probably, not only is it probably worth 10 times, probably worth 100 times more than what it was when you first had earned it from sharing the application. So if you hold those tokens a little while, they're going to have um, an increased market value anyway. And so that allows us to remove them. So that's how we remove that Ponzi piece. It doesn't take new users coming to the project for this project to stay stable and to be profitable. And so we cut that piece out. Then we're decentralized 100%. There is not one piece of this project that has any centralization to it whatsoever. And 99% of your projects out there claim they're decentralized because they're on a decentralized exchange. That does not make you decentralized. That just means that you've got your token listed on an exchange. But if that project, whoever created it, has any part uh, if they're the custodian of any of your money, if they decide when you're going to get your tokens or how long you've got to hold them, that's a centralized project and it's going to fail because when you've got to rely on a human being to manage your funds, you don't know if they're going to manage that project, right? You don't know how good they are or aren't with money or how greedy they are or how honest they are. If it's not totally decentralized, you should stay away from it. You don't know me from anywhere. I'm not somebody that's going to take one penny from a person, but you don't know me and you shouldn't trust that when you're getting ready to spend money and devote a lot of time into a project. So you want to make sure it's completely decentralized, period. And you want one that's got a self-sustaining ecosystem. Why should you come into a project and what do they do? They want you to buy their tokens so that they can build their project. There's no guarantee they're going to even build what they say they're going to build. There's no guarantee there's going to be utility, but you're going to fund their project creation. Then they want you to provide the liquidity. They want you to come out of your pocket. They want you to buy both pairs or both tokens to create a pair and then add it as liquidity so they can give you a few bucks in transaction fee rewards. Nobody's going to leave their money there forever. So they're always going to pull the money out of the liquidity pool. I don't care who you are. At some point in time, you're going to remove that liquidity. When the first big liquidity provider pulls it out, the next one pulls, the next one pulls, the next one pulls, the community freaks out. They start to sell their tokens. And it's gone. And before all that happens, the project creator has already cashed all theirs out because they probably already seen it coming. And so the project crashes and burns and 50, 70% of the people in that community probably didn't cash out anything and lost all the money that they had put into it. That does not exist here. And we have a liquidity provision, which I'll explain to you as we go further through this. <clears throat> this is completely managed by smart contracts. And every time a user pushes a button inside the DAP or on the Web3, you're transacting and recording to a blockchain. And we're going to be on eight. Right now, 
you would be recording to the avalanche chain. You're submitting that proof of physical activity. You're claiming your rewards. You're minting your miners. You're evolving. All of this stuff is managed through smart contracts. There's nowhere in this project where I have to push a button to approve it for you to do something. You're in complete and total control. No person, no group, no company, nothing is managing any of your money or your data. Everything is recorded in real time. Everything is paid out instantly. The minute you make a call to a smart contract, everything is done. And so it's also recorded anonymously to the blockchain, but it's also there to be validated um, for that physical activity that you do to validate the tokens that you've re you've been rewarded. Now you can go in and click a decode button and it'll show you what miners you have and what proof of physical activity so that you can validate it. So, you know, it's all transparent, but you manage the whole thing. Because of our self-sustaining ecosystem, this is why we stand out, okay? Because it doesn't exist unless you're a blockchain. And it is designed to maintain stability through the active participation of its users. Once you mint those miners, okay, that move quest goes back into the vault, pays a commission, but then you've stepped into our ecosystem. The minting of the miners, that's just the reduction of the move quest supply. I think you guys understood that now, but inside the ecosystem, when you unlock your dock slots, it's liquidity. You evolve your miners, it's liquidity. You submit your proof of physical activity, it's liquidity. When you claim your mining rewards, it's liquidity. When you create joint challenges, liquidity. Lease your miners out, liquidity. The gamification that we have in here, like the boosts and all the different features that'll be here, it's all liquidity. Everything you do is liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. Everything, 90% is liquidity. how it works and I'm going to go over the components of the system. The first one is the DAP. You are going to download GetFit Mining uh, through the Android Play Store with iOS until we go into the MoveQuest brand because of the uh, the corporation and getting all that stuff set up for MoveQuest and want to do it twice. Um, so you're using Test Flight for GetFit. Once we do the rebrand and we move into uh, move quest you won't need test flight anymore you just go to the apple i store or the app store uh, download move quest and the same thing for androids and everything will transfer over so everything you're doing within get fit it's seamless you know all your miners everything uh, everything just opens up and it's there in that brand new fancy app that you'll see and you're going to want to if you're an Android, get Google Fit Health Connect. If you're an Apple iPhone, you're going to want to use uh, Apple Health and activate those because if you haven't purchased your miners yet, it'll give you two days worth of physical activity from the minute you mint those miners and plug them into the mining dock. So it's like getting started two days before you actually did, which is kind of nice. You know, it's kind of like a little bonus there. And it's going to track your steps, distance, your calories, your workouts, and your sleep. And so you're going to mine these rewards based on your daily physical activity 24-7. The more you move, the more intense the movement, the faster that uh, those tokens are being mined, the more mining power you have. We've got five levels of miners. Everybody starts out with a level one miner. Now, when we move into MoveQuest, all of these miners have different names and they're more gamey uh, names. They won't be like this. This I have a mind for numbers. And like, I like to break things apart, tear them apart, put them all back together again, for whatever reason, that's just who I am and spreadsheets. But you asked me to name things. I can't do it. Lenny was named after one of our community people um, that wanted us to name it Lenny. And I'm like, okay, why not? We named it Lenny. And then primary ultra alpha omega, you know, it's not super creative, but that's what they're named right now. And then, you know, our wonderful core team of people that are building this like crazy of actually come up with some really amazing names for the gamification side of this. So everybody starts at the level one miner, 50% mining power. And, you know, people that are mining with those uh, seven Lenny miners are making, and this is not doing full physical activity. This is doing like, you know, 50% of what's available of the max, doing 50% of that max activity. They're, ma they're averaging 50 to $75 a day in mining rewards. To me, you know, if you look at that, that's life changing, even at that level of mining. But then when you start evolving up into those higher powered miners, Omegas are making on average right now, eight to $9,000 a month. And that's really amazing money 
um, to be able to make in a self-sustaining ecosystem. And you can go to the exchange and you can see there's they people are exchanging. They're can't they're selling their move bus. You know, some people are uh, going through the evolution process to upgrade their miners. That's that USDT um, that comes in through the evolution contract. That's one of our, I'd say our, um, right now, it's our largest part of the liquidity because we're still building um, the community. But once the community has grown into a much larger size, they're all submitting, they're all claiming and joining challenges and events and leasing out their miners. And that is a very powerful part um, of this ecosystem. 10,000 people who are mining in this project and just the submissions alone are adding, it's like crazy millions of dollars in a year. So it's just constantly pumping that liquidity, everything you do inside this project. When you plug your miners in, into those mining dock slots, you are using MoveQuest. Now, it's important to understand that as the community grows and as the market value of the token goes up, because it's a self-funding ecosystem, the fees also increase because it's a stabilizer as well. It's not just, you know, about making the market value of the token go up, but it's about stabilizing that liquidity pool so that it stays very powerful. And it's all done through the ecosystem. So when you're spending you know, to submit, to claim and do all these different things. Remember, it's 90% liquidity and it continues to stabilize that project. So this DAC slot fees right now, the first one is free. The second, then through the seventh, they each have a fee on them. It's a one-time fee, you never pay it again. But it is important to understand that as the market value goes up and the token, okay, just so you know, there's like 3,000 people right now, just a few over that, that are mining. And you can see how the market value of this token um, is right now and where it's stabilizing at. And I'll tell you why it's stabilizing there in a second. It probably would have been a little bit higher um, than it is, but there's a reason behind it. So as the community grows and the market value increases, if you know if it's at 97 to to $100 with 3,000 people, can you imagine what the market value is going to be like when there's 10,000 people, 100,000 people here? This will compete with Bitcoin. This will surpass Bitcoin. And it doesn't take a massive amount of people. 100,000 people that are using this app, mining with seven miners at whatever power they have. And we will almost be at Bitcoin prices right now. And you wouldn't even believe me if I told you a million people using this app where we'd be in relation to Bitcoin because it's crazy. And that's because of our ecosystem. We have a liquidity provision that your blockchains do not have. And that's what makes this even more powerful than what a blockchain is. The more power with your uh, miners getting started at 50%, you can evolve them. Okay, this is where I was talking about with that USDT. There's a fee to evolve into the next powered miner. Now, there's a fee for that using the USDT because this project never sells the token ever. So with the USDT, it goes to buy that token from the exchange and it brings back the move quest, pairs it to the USDT and injects it as liquidity. So now it's also a market correction. Okay. It's got a market correction in it. So when it buys that move quest, it's buying up what others have sold when there may not be a buyer there. And so it needs that move quest to pair it to the USDT to add it back in as liquidity. So for example, let's say it was $1,000 in the evolution contract and $500 of MoveQuest had to be purchased. It would take $500 of USDT. It would go buy $500 on the exchange. Well, that's going to make the market value go up a little bit, but then it brings back 500 to the evolution. It's got 500 there. So now it's got $1,000 again and it injects 1,000 as liquidity. So $1,000 actually contributed 1500 to the market value of that token because they had to buy it, pair it, inject it. And so this happens all day long. I don't know, you guys can go and look and you'll see where there's you know, buys, addition, buys, addition, buys, addition, and the evolution contract will just trigger and boom, it'll, it'll buy and it'll do that um, liquidity injection. Now, coming soon, we'll have boosts, loot, mystery boxes, plus the challenges and events. You'll be able to create challenges. 
you'll be able to charge entry fees for your challenges. The community will pay your entry fee. You'll be able to create rewards or prizes, you know, first, second, third place, whatever amount of prize, you know, placements, placement winners you want. And then you'll, you know, put in the smart contract. And this is all done through like a, you won't even realize you're creating a smart contract for your challenge, okay? Because we have it set up on the UI side, the user interface, that you just think you're pushing some buttons and, you know, setting your parameters for your uh, challenge or your event, but you're actually creating a smart contract. And so you'll set, you know, when your start time is on that challenge. And then your whoever is, you know, joined that challenge, it will begin. And when it ends, that smart contract is going to disperse the winnings to the whatever placement winners there are. And if you didn't use all of it for the placement winners, it's going to send you back whatever profit you made for holding that challenge. But the project's going to get a percentage of that for liquidity. So when you create a challenge, there'll be a fee. When you join a challenge, there's a fee. And if the project or the challenge creator had a profit, there's we the when I say we, I mean we as a community get that percentage and it's all liquidity. So every time you're interacting, this is all liquidity. You'll be able to lease out your miners. There's going to come a time when these miners cost more than $50. Okay, when there's a hundred thousand miners, then that move quest price locks that you're spending right now. So if you go to min a miner and let's say it takes one move quest as an example, it will lock at one move quest. And now it doesn't matter if move quest is a hundred dollars or if it's five hundred dollars. It will still take one move quest. So now those miners are going to be expensive. Not everybody is going to be able to, you know, come in and mint seven miners or 14 miners because they could be five thousand dollars just for that entry level miner so what they'll be able to do you always want to be able to expand the community you never want to lock somebody out because they can't afford it but at the same time you want these miners to have value right they're an nft they're a token and so and they have a use right they are mining these tokens so you want them to become more and more valuable um, you want them to be competitive and so you'll be able to lease them out. So again, you'll stake your miner to the marketplace and then anybody can come to that marketplace and they just connect their wallet to your miner and you set the parameters. You're you're renting these out. You can charge a set fee. You can charge a percentage, um, whatever it is that you want to do. And you own that miner. Now anybody can come in and they can mine using your miners. And so they're using their proof of physical activity to mine, and they're going to submit that to the blockchain. And then that smart contract is going to send to each person, the owner of the miner and the person who's renting it, a claim button so that the owner of the miner can collect their rent fee and the person who provided the physical activity can can uh, claim their, their rewards. They can get their rewards uh, mining rewards from their proof of physical activity. You control that miner. If somebody is leasing it and they're not submitting, they're not using it, you can cancel that smart contract and then you can restake it to the market. So it allows us to be competitive with the market of those, you know, the prices on those miners. It also doesn't create where people can't come in and still be a part of our community. So they can't min a miner. That's okay but they can still be a part of the community because we've got a marketplace full of these miners. Now, what miners are they going to be? Are they going to be uh, the power, you know, the level one, they're going to be a level five that makes it competitive on the market. Are you going to have a flat rental rate? Are you going to have a percentage, you know, does it have higher mining power than another one? And so it keeps that really competitive on that marketplace, which is going to keep it fun as well. And they'll be searching. They're going to want the best miner that's got the best rate, you know, and they'll be able to mine with more than one. So they'll be able to connect to whatever is available in a mining dock. They'll be able to rent up to seven of them right now. Um, and so it's going to create this uh, digital real estate for you that you're going to be able to earn additional revenue from as well. And then, of course, the rebranding to move quest. Um, we're really excited about that. We've got so many features that are in the in the rebranding 
And all of this takes, not the rebranding part, but this was supposed to be coming soon, other verse, and then rebranding to move quest, but I kind of got them in opposite order. But everything I'm talking about here, it takes move quest. And so there's a lot of utility, a lot of use for that move quest. When you go to these other projects, nine times out of 10, the only thing you can do with their tokens is buy and sell. It just becomes a buying selling frenzy. Who can get their you know, to buy first at the lowest price and who can sell first at the highest price before it all crashes. But here you actually have an ecosystem and you actually have a project where the money stays with the community. And so the larger the community, the more liquidity. The more you move, the more you mine. Rebranding to move quest is going to be, you guys are going to absolutely love it. It makes it so much simpler to get started, but you don't want to wait for that because Right now, I mean, everybody says, well, I heard somebody say this to me today. Um, somebody told me that, well, it's probably too late for me now. The token's $100. And I'm thinking, huh, we only got 3,000 people here. This token hasn't even started to do what it's going to do. It's like crazy what this token will do. And then, of course, we are working with um, another one of our, uh, well, we've just got an amazing team of people here, you guys. Everybody is awesome here. You know, we've got so many people that have volunteered and they're working with everybody, but one of the guys in our core uh, group that's, you know, been very proactive and helping us build as well is part of something called the Otherverse. And so this is going to be a lot of fun, too. We've, I've been in so many conversations about this um, the, and more additional mining opportunities for people in the Otherverse. You'll be able to create your own space. Like, let's say you've got people you want to work out with, right? You're going to have your own avatars. You'll be able to have your own, like, you know, kind of like your own little gym everybody's in there working out together you know you're really in your own rooms but you look like you're in the same verse there other verse i don't that's above my head i'm good with numbers but coming into that gamify stuff they keep talking to me about it and i'm like oh my god it's like stuff my 30 year old sons would probably get into or whatever but i'm learning the metaverse now it's, it's fun so this has opened up so many doors it's just crazy getting started you got to get that DAP wallet. Um, it's got to be able to connect to the Avalanche chain. So I'm most familiar with MetaMask, but it could be Token Pocket Trust Wallet as long as it's a DAP wallet. I prefer MetaMask because I'm just more familiar with it, but that doesn't mean that you're not familiar with something else. You can use whatever you want. Android downloads Google Fit. iOS download Apple Health. You want to download the Get Fit Mining app, and you're going to need to fund your wallet with MoveQuest, USDT, and AVAX. The reason those three are here is because you have to remember the project never sells MoveQuest ever, ever, ever. That is the, uh, that's the biggest no, no, no here. Ever, never happens. So MoveQuest to mint, MoveQuest within the ecosystem, USDT to evolve, AVAX to submit and to claim. Reason for that. We don't want people to have to have two tokens when they are submitting to the blockchain. So we just use the AVAX for that fee. That way the AVAX could be converted to MoveQuest, or it can be converted to USDT, whatever the contract needs for that part of the liquidity. And that's why that's used. So beyond the financial gains, right, we also promote that improved health and fitness. People are addicted to this app. I love it. I am too. But it makes you compete with yourself to get those steps in to get that movement in because you know the more you move the more you're mining the more money that you're making and so it's a big deal and it's not it's not two or three bucks i remember we got started with this everybody was saying yeah you know if the average person could just make five bucks a day this is going to be a real hit i'm like mm, well that's going to be easy to do <laughs> you know because this is not meant to do five dollars a day I designed this and I created this for this to change people's lives around the globe, not to put a little bit of money in your pocket, but to change your life so that you don't have a mortgage and you can go pay cash for a vehicle when you want to. You can take your family on a vacation and you can live life the way you're supposed to be able to live your life. This, you know, poverty and middle class stuff. No, above that, way above that. You know, this puts an end to all of that. And it's very solid. We do not store, sell, or shave, share your data, you guys. You are in control of all of that. We literally don't even see that data. It comes in through the miners. It's all raw data, and you are the one who has submitted it to the blockchain. We can 
call the basic data and know what the metrics are, how many steps are, you know, and we can go look it up on the blockchain based on a wallet, but we're not storing it in our servers. Our servers cost less than 25 bucks a month. It's only got images in it. Literally, this entire project is completely on chain. And that's MoveQuest um, in a nutshell. What I want to do next is I'm just going to go to um, the exchange. I want to kind of show you how this works. I I I created this. It does, you know, whales just don't exist here. There's no place for them here. Okay. Um, and we've proven this twice now. We have one wallet that has tried twice to do this. The evolution contract, it this all the smart contracts, okay, they communicate with each other. It's looking for trends. It's got to know what size is the community. How many miners are mining? What level of miner? What's the average this? What's the average that? Okay, it's got algorithms that it has to follow. This evolution contract is a big deal, okay? And when somebody, okay, this wallet in particular, we had gotten up to where the price was about $110, but it was slowly coming down because people were evolving. Well, what happened here was it got down to about, hundred bucks. And really that's where it needed to go. It needed to be there based on the liquidity. The evolution wasn't kicking in any buys. It was only kicking in liquidity. When there's overselling, the evolution will correct it, right? It'll buy that move quest. It's already bought. Like, I don't even remember how many it is now, 23,000, 24,000 uh, move quests that it's sitting in that, that, that are sitting in the evolution uh, wallet to be added as liquidity. So let me explain something to you. When we first got started, imagine it like this. It took 100,000 move quests to $100 or $1,000, $100,000 to list it at $1. When it goes up to $2, it would only need 50,000 move quests to $50,000. So as the price goes up, it needs less move quests paired to USDT. So the evolution contract wants to do just like a person should want to do buy it as low as possible and not buy it as high as possible. Like you never want to buy super high when you know if it, you, you know, you always, you buy low, you sell high. The evolution doesn't sell though. The evolution injects, but it wants to buy that move cost low because it means more liquidity. So back when we listed the token, it took a hundred thousand move quest, a hundred thousand move quest today would put in 10 million. No, It'd be even more than that. Uh, I'd have to do the math on it, but it's even more than 10 million. So it's sitting on 25,000 move quests, which is almost $25 million in value. That means it's already holding $25 million worth of liquidity. So it's already got half of 50 million, okay, for the liquidity. Going back to this wallet here that sold, it was coming down to about the $100 mark. Most likely, because they were only here to buy and sell. They weren't here like from the beginning where they wanted to be market makers and hold those tokens because they'd already tried this when they sold $85,000 like three weeks prior to that. And I don't even think the token was at $10 yet. And they already went through it once, but they wanted to test it again, I guess. And so what they did was sold it and they dropped it down to $74. Well, the evolution contract, it gets... I like to use the word angry, you know, like angry birds. It's like the angry evolution. And it will correct that because it's here for the community. It's not here for that whale. Any other project, what would have happened? And this is exactly what that wallet expected to have happen. If you see something dive like that in the first six, seven weeks that a token has been listed, you're thinking, oh shit, we just, there's the dump. It's coming. And what does that trigger? A sell-off. Sell, 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 sell. That wallet, knowing what is generally happening in the crypto space, knew that it would trigger something like that. But what it was expecting was to be able to buy it lower than what it sold it for. Uh-uh, that didn't happen. The evolution contract turns around, removes the excess token, takes that USD and buys it back up to where it's supposed to be. That wallet did the FOMO thing and come back in and bought $150,000 and drove it up to $115.
right up in this there, right there is where it bought it, right to there. 115, then turned around, bought another $100,000 and brought it up to that 100, it was $125. There's no liquidity up there, but they bought in too late. They can't beat the evolution contract. The evolution contract knew what to do. And it now it knows that that wallet is out there, right? So it that person, that wallet drove it up. Well, of course, it triggered some sell-offs. No big deal. It really wasn't that much because there was nothing. There wasn't a whole lot up there. It just brought it right back down to where it was. Now that evolution contract, it's just pumping. It's just pumping it in at this market value. And I was looking at the algorithm today. And basically what it's doing is it's staying within a 90 about a $97 to $100 range is what that evolution contract is maintaining it at. And I was looking at the algorithm and until this liquidity is stable enough for this wallet to come back in and sell so that it can't affect the market. But what it's done is this. It's maintaining, it's building the liquidity. So as you see, $234,000 have been sold today. I think when we started out this morning, we were at 4.6 per 4.6 million in liquidity. And all those sales have taken place and it's still at 4.7 million. So it stabilizes that market. But what it's done is it's locked this this wallet. If it sells, it bought at high price, $125. Okay, it sold them for 74. There's a 74 to $125 margin right there of, of loss. So if they sell, they bought higher than they sold, and they're going to have to sell lower than they bought. That's what that evolution contract does to a whale that comes in and does something like that. So this is not a pump and dump. This is a dump and pump, okay? And then it will maintain it. So what this evolution has done is now this wallet can't sell until the price is at least over $125, or it's going to take a $60,000 loss at a minimum because of where it sold and where it ended up driving itself back up to. And so now, because the evolution contract has algorithms to follow, it knows what the community is doing. It's maintaining it for the community, but it's blocking that sale. And if it does sell, it incurs a loss. And it's a very complex project. And I know a lot of people want to understand it to its fullest. I just want everybody to understand that it's more than just moving because this thing is very complex and it took three years to build this and put it together but you can see that it's very strong with only 3,000 people and it's still maintaining and it's still allowing people to make a really good amount of earning on the tokens that they are mining and we're only with 3,000 people so it's only going to get better it's only going to get better so if anybody's got questions, that's pretty much all I've got. That that was phenomenal. Um, what, one question is like, say I look at the contract and I see four big uh, wallets. Oh, let me show that. You know, and I'm I like, oh my gosh, that someone too. owns 98% of the tokens. Is this a good, uh, it's a red flag, right? Okay, so like on the Binance Smart Chain, it's kind of nice because they show you what is a contract. They kind of have a little like contract over here on this side. And then this would be the clipboard. These first four are the contracts. Okay. This is the vault. It's holding 20,649,906 of the move quest. Now, once the, once the community has increased in size and it's reached its full daily distributed amount of token, these will all be locked in a vested contract. And then what it will do is that vested contract will actually release the move quest tokens that need to be in the airdrop for the year. And then it just disperses daily based on the mining rewards. So that's uh, that's the move quest uh, vault, okay, that those are held in. That's a smart contract. This here is the uh, evolution contract. These are the tokens that are distributed on a daily basis, and it's 2,500 a day. Um, and so if you were to uh, click on that contract, you would see people claiming their tokens. And then this here is the liquidity pool that's on Uniswap. 
And this is the connector to the evolution contract. So this, remember I was telling you it was holding like 25,000 move costs. It's holding 23,802 move costs. None of these will be sold. So this is the evolution. This is what holds the 23,000 move quest for liquidity. This is, that's already bought them. So the evolution's already bought these from the market for liquidity. This is the pool. This is the uh, distribution airdrop for the daily mining rewards. And this is the vault. This here is all wallets beyond that are holding move quest. And I'm not even up in these wallets. I don't even hold the most move quests. That's crazy too, I think. But I don't even hold the most move quests. I haven't bought that many. I've got, I don't know, I'm in here somewhere. I've got like, uh, I don't I'm know. I'm still striving to get on that front page. Yeah, I don't even think I'm on the front page either. So I don't feel bad. I'm almost at 3,000, Brian. That's crazy. That's cool. That's why where I'm at. Another question, and I, I love this question, is, you know, how do we get the 2,500 MQT daily dis, uh, distribution pool to increase? What's the plan of action there? Okay, so that's the, that depends on a lot of factors. The the size of the community, the amount of miners in the mining dock. Now, when I say size of community, that is based on the liquidity. This FDV, you got to ignore that, that $2 billion is like, so off because the uh, when coin market cap verifies our token when the applic when the app blah, the application is in but we've asked them to wait until we go to move quest so that they have all of the proper data um you know the right website links and all of our branding is there because once it's up it's going to be really hard to get it switched over for our big launch or you know grand opening whatever you want to call it you know we do our big kickoff and press releases and media and all that stuff so you have to base this on what's actually in circulation. There's only about 250,000 move quest in circulation. That's it. It doesn't count um, these ones here that it doesn't, this is not, these are not in circulation. Okay, this is in a liquidity pool or not liquidity pool, airdrop. These aren't in circulation yet. These are on, you know, they're also in a smart contract in the liquidity pool and until they're in a wallet, they should not be counted. And these should not be counted either because they are actually in the evolution, uh, connected to the evolution and not in the liquidity yet, but they'll never be sold. So once CoinMarketCap gets all that data verified and we actually list it officially on CoinMarketCap, it will correct the uh, FDV, the fully diluted value in the market cap based on the tokens that are actually in circulation. So we're actually right around 24 million. Okay, now the evolution contract, it knows this. And so does the uh, airdrop. I, I need a better word for that because I don't have one. But the distribution contract, they, are, they communicate together. And so it actually knows what the real FDV is based on our liquidity, based on the number of miners, based on the community who is submitting. And all of those numbers have to equal stability. And then it will begin to increase the market or the tokens that are going into the market to the to the miners. We're getting closer, but I think that um, we're probably, I don't know, I'm guessing a couple of weeks away anyway. If we base it on our current growth, the current pace, we're probably two to three weeks before we see it begin to increase. The, this project is all about checks and balances and, you know, sustainability. All of it. And all of these contracts communicate and knows when things need to happen. And so that way everybody understands, you know, you'll, you'll get a really good idea of how it's working as you're using it more and more, um, you know, what each piece is contributing. You'll start to be able to read it better and understand what, what it's looking for. So did that answer what you wanted me to explain, Brad? I, I like your answers. I'm like, so closer to the rebranding. <laughs> Right. Well, I think it kind really explode with the rebranding, but you know, like for for example, let's say it increased it to three thousand a day. With the current size of the community, it would just increase more selling. And does that affect like because that was the next question? You know, is there a concern there's more selling than buying? No, and because the evolution can always correct it. So correct. yeah, it always it can correct it and do what it needs to be done. So when there's overselling. The evolution, the evolution is, all this belongs to the community, right? 
none of this if so let's put it this way everybody's like I, this is set up to be a certain way and to operate a certain way if you know a lot of people are oh, how do we know we can trust you well because it's all managed by smart contracts and you're going to have to trust me at some point because who leaves 90 percent in a project they want to try to you know mess up but if that ever happens then you know that's that's just not going to happen and I know I get a lot of people that ask me that question, but it's not going to happen because it wasn't built this way. So if it has to do a correction, it's only putting it back into the evolution to add it back later. So when you, you before? so when you see something like corrected or removed, it's never actually removed. What it's doing is it'll remove the excess tokens. And it'll take the USDT that came out with the removal and it will buy out more excess tokens and then it will inject liquidity to stabilize the correction that it did without me getting too like, I know I start confusing people with all of that stuff, but it actually corrects the market when there's overselling. But you don't want to dilute the market and then try to correct that. So it can correct what's supposed to be there, but not in over dilution. And that's why it hasn't increased the distribution that goes out daily yet, because we're not at that stable market. When we hit the 10 million mark, based on what the contracts um, are putting back into my stats, what I see on my spreadsheets from the different, uh, from all the stats that come into me, from all the like the daily mining, the rewards, all the stuff that's coming in, it's going to be closer to the 10 million mark and the liquidity that we really see a substantial amount of move quest added into the daily distribution i have a question for you another uh... yeah. okay, question do you think the price is going to continue to rise like we plat total looks like between 96 and 100 dollars. it looks like oh that's what i was explaining to you guys that's done on purpose it's done on purpose to stop the overselling of the bigger wallets it's stabilizing this until it hits closer you know it gets higher liquidity in here so it'll start to, you'll start to see the evolution contract buys, pairs, adds. Right now, it's not doing much buying. It's got 23,000 move quest in there. It's stabilizing it at this market value so that the community as a whole isn't getting this this type of selling off here. So it's Even stable. a certain point before the coin can move higher? Uh, the liquidity needs to be higher to offset these types of sell-offs. And that's what so that the would, contract is doing. more users help that? What's that? Let's just say this month, every day, another 500 people sign up. So in a month from now, we have another 15,000 people. We'll have 20,000 people. That prevent the sell-off from happening again? Well, no. We don't care if he sells. That's not the point. The point is there wasn't enough liquidity for a $300,000 sale. We've only been listed for six, six, seven weeks, eight weeks. You know, had this had $10 million on it, who cares if he sells? We don't care. It would not have even affected the market. But what he did. Are we registered that, with the SEC? Pardon me? Are we registered with the SEC? So, Lynette, this guy's dropping the Ponzi scheme MLM behind MLM. In the no, I'm asking because somebody brought up in the chat. That, I don't need to be that, listed. That with says you are not registered, so I'm asking uh, since you're the right, owner. Well, tokens do not have to be registered with the SEC when they have a utility. We're not a blockchain, and we're not a coin. Therefore, we don't have to be registered with the SEC. Is and if you other... are, if you are, if you are a crypto critic and you're somebody who's analyzing that, you should go back to the drawing board and learn more about crypto before you come in and analyze something that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's true. That's why I don't act like I'm talking about. Know what I'm talking about. Um, right. Another question. I get this a lot the, um, about being audited. Is the blockchain, is this blockchain audited? And why are well, we I'm sure, well, I don't know. if Av I'm sure Avalanche has had whatever they have to do. I mean, they're a strong chain. Now, our project itself, we will have our contracts audited. So the token contract has been completely renounced. And you can go and do like a solidity uh, audit on that. And it passes with flying colors. Now, so do our other contracts because we've already had internal audits done. But we, when we add new features, those contracts all have to communicate. And there are times that we have to upgrade or update a contract. 
and audits to do a really good audit with a well-known auditor, those are expensive. And so when we finish up the challenges and the leasing contracts, we will have all of our main contracts audited, but I don't want to have to double pay um, auditing fees. We do leave 90% with the project. And so I'm very careful with how money is spent um, for these types of things. And we're looking at probably fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars per contract that's got to be audited, and there'll probably be ten to fifteen of them that will need to be audited. And after they're audited, can they see the audit reports? One person. Oh yeah, we'll publish the audits, one hundred percent. Yep. All okay. right. And AK, you got a question? What's up, buddy? Yeah. Uh, Helen, I just had two questions. So uh -huh. uh, one thing you said that caught me was, uh, you said that the market is preparing for uh the big wallet that previously sold, right? Um, so it's preparing like enough li uh, liquidity to like in case he sells again, it won't affect the market price, right? So exactly. uh, yeah, are these smart contracts like recording like these big like these big sells and then it prepares for those liquidity? I mean, it prepares so that it, it builds enough liquidity so that in case he sells again, it'll stabilize the market. But also, right. um, is it like, is that when, a, when like, let's say a whale does that, right? And they sell like a huge amount and now the coin is building enough liquidity to support that sell-off is does that hold the coin back from growing in price every single time that it will does that nope it doesn't so the only reason it did it this time we've like i said we've only been listed for what seven six seven weeks so that was too much of a sale for the liquidity to support it and that's why it dropped it down like it did mm -hmm. so that person you know if they would have sold like you got people that'll sell ten fifteen thousand dollars worth at a time and that's that doesn't do anything to it doesn't do any type of a correction but this was a huge sell that was a three hundred thousand dollar sell and to drop it down to 74 is still you know 74 dollars is still a really good price on the token but it's too much for what this project does you know what i mean if you if it was like a one of your other tokens let's say that got up to maybe a dollar and somebody had done that. Maybe they were only taken 30,000. It would have dropped it down to 30 cents. That would have been a big sell, you know? So you have to look at it relative to the price of the token. And because there isn't many tokens in circulation, it does drive the market up pretty quick um, on the, when you're buying. It doesn't take a whole lot to drive up the market. I'm going to bring up a spreadsheet that will kind of give you, let's see. So like in the future, if that were to happen again, right? Like is the coin, like the contract will not wait until the liquidity is built, right? Or have enough liquidity to support it right away. Exactly. Okay. And then um, my second question is, uh, you said something along the lines of coming out on eight networks, eight chains, right? So how would that work in the sense that because MQT is on the Avalanche chain right now, how would the competition work between the same coin on different networks and, and how would the mining and all that work as well? Because say all of us right now, because only MQT is available on the Avalanche chain, we're all buying miners on the Avalanche chain. We're all buying MQTs on the Avalanche chain. Now, let's say MQT comes out on the Ethereum network or Bitcoin network, for example, those are really big networks and you know those are very famous. Everyone knows those. And so what if a lot of people are buying on, let's say, the Ethereum or Bitcoin network and they're buying miners and now there's a new person that comes in and he sees like, oh, MQ2 is listed on eight networks. How would he know which one to buy? But aside from that, how like would that not affect the prices of, let's say, MQT on the Avalanche chain? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be like a direct competitor to itself because of all the chains that it's on? No, because there's different projects on different chains, different groups of people on different chains. You know, some people like different chains and they do. And with our airdrop, we are also working with projects who are going to be adding their tokens to the project. So you wouldn't be just mining our native token, but you'd be able to also mine other project tokens and coins on those blockchains. So it's not a, it's not a competitor. You still have to have the miners over on those chains. And so the ecosystem is still the same. It's not taking funds from Avalanche to support the other blockchain. The Avalanche is Avalanche. The other chains are the other chains. They each have their own supporting ecosystems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that I understand. Like they'll have their uh, own ecosystem and it will support itself just like how MQT does on the Avalanche chain. 
my question was just like in like you know say like the like say there's like a million users right and then it's divided among the eight networks wouldn't that like kind of come like hold mqt on avalanche chain for example from going up like uh, that, that a million users would bring or like wouldn't it like because it's divided why, why, would, why would it do that though oh just because like let's say this eight a million users divided among eight networks versus a million users on the avalanche network wouldn't like that kind of like compete with prices a little bit well you still have the same ecosystems and you still the in order for you to mine on let's say eight chains you still have to submit on eight chains you still have to mine you have to mint the miners you still have to you know upgrade if you want the higher powered miners you still have to submit every day you still have to claim you know if you want to be on a challenge on one chain you know you still have to you know that all of the ecosystem is still it still costs to participate on that ecosystem that ecosystem is still injecting that liquidity so it they all fund themselves based mm. on whatever you're involved in so if you are participating let's say on three chains you're participating in three chains ecosystems you're still supplying all of those three chains liquidity there's still the fees there's still all the in-app transacting that's taking place to do the mining and so they still fund themselves just like this chain does so they, they operate the same they don't compete with each other they each have their own ecosystem and everybody if you're mining on that chain using that ecosystem you're contributing to that ecosystem Got it. That makes sense. So when do you think like the next um like what's the like what do you think the next coin will come out on the next chain? Like what are the time frame for uh the next coin and what like chain do you think it will be on? Right now, so we are deciding whether we've got the eight, so it's gonna be uh Arbitrum, Base, Blast, Polkadot, Polygon, and Solana. Those are the next six chains. And we haven't a hundred percent decided which one yet we're going to go on. So it doesn't make any difference to us, right? Which one, cause they all operate the same. So one's not better than the other. What we're doing right now is looking at what, what each chain offers specifically in the DeFi space and what types of projects are on those chains, which ones have the most speculative growth in the nearest future for our user base, because that way you, you know, you're, you're buying that token, you're involved in that chain. If they are going to grow faster, we want to be on that chain because we're going to attract more users, obviously. Um, so we're looking at a lot of different things. So if there's one that you guys like, or that you think would be better than another, let us know too, because we always listen to the community. Um, everybody's got a different opinion on and reasons why. And I just do a lot of research um, to try to, make that determination based on what I see growth speculation for those. Right now, I am more leaning towards Arbitrum um, or base. I think base is going to be a big one. I like base too. Sure. That makes sense. For the, the questions of like swapping through the chains, it's literally on your phone already where you can see different chains on here. You just click on the chain and it goes to that chain. You know, so then you would submit through there. You would buy Lenny's, evolve your miners, do the same thing there. And then your back office, you would just toggle between Avalanche network to the base network, to the Ethereum network. It's just super simple. Same stuff pulls up. And yeah, we have to buy Lenny's and open docs on there if you want to build liquidity, you know. And uh, yeah, Lynette, show that chart. Yeah, show these charts. These are some powerful charts. Yeah, I'm going to give you, and I, so I, when I do, because of the self-funding ecosystem, I can base numbers on growth. So let me see here, 20, 973. Sorry, the person keeps unmuting. All right. So you can see here with the move quest that's in the pool, and the USDT in the pool, that the price of the token, let me, let me see what the price is. And you guys plan on making these charts kind of available on the sites, right? Um, yeah, we can. So it has got the market value of the token at 95.70. So it's about five cents off, probably in the USDT, um, 95.76. And here, 
So it's like, you know, this is real. I mean, it's the numbers work. But at any rate, this is with seven minors, people mining with seven minors. And if they were all omega, they would have had to have minted 14 of the Lennies, right? So they go to the exchange, they buy the move quest. That's what this is based on. And so I'm going to just change this to something low. We'll just do 15. So I can show you what this is. This is the commission, okay? 100% of the Lenny will cost $700. So if 15 people come in, it would have added $10,500 to the exchange. That means they went and purchased $10,500. And right now, it's 60% in commission. So we figure they're going to sell it all. That would be, they need 110 uh, move quests to mint those miners. 15 people who mint the 14 miners. It's going to remove the move quest from the pool that it took from here. And it's going to adjust and it's going to drive the market. No, oh, this is them selling. This is them selling their move quest. Sorry. Everybody sells their move quest and it adjusts the liquidity pool over here. Da, da, da. Okay. This is when they're selling it. 16 sold. So here you've got them buying. The $96, it would take it from $95.75 to $96.60. Then we figure they're going to all sell that 60%, 100%. So it's going to drop the price down to about $96.09, okay, if everybody went and sold. Now, when they go and evolve the Lenny to primary, primary to ultra, ultra to alpha, alpha to omega, this is all the evolution money that comes in. It actually buys and it adds and it drives the market back to 98.29. So the evolution buys and injects. So here you've got onboarding, they're minting their miners, and that would drive it up to the 96.60. Then they sell, it takes the price down, but then they evolve, okay? And it drives the market back up to 98.29. Then they are adding here, it adds in that uh, liquidity, adjust the price. I've just got it here twice so you can see where it adds it and deducts it. Then you've got the mining dock, okay? And that doesn't really drive the market up because the mining dock and the submissions, they pretty much uh, work together. They're pretty much even. And so you don't see anything really, it just pretty much stabilizes the market there. And then you've got your daily distribution. Now it's not 20, it's 2,500 right now, not 5,008. And so even then, it doesn't drop it down very much because the evolution in the entire ecosystem, it just stabilizes the market value of the token. So every time a person is minting, evolving, docking, submitting, claiming, and selling everything, this is figuring that everybody is selling all of their tokens, it still stabilizes. And that's what you're seeing right now is that stabilization of that market. Now, when you look at this coming in, all these people, they're coming in, they're minting the miners, yada, yada, yada. 2,850 people, okay, who are minting the 14 miners. And if everybody was at Omega, our price would be at about $322, okay? If everybody does seven, and this is what I like to do, seven people mining, from where we're at right now today, the amount of people we have, if we add 2,850 more people and all they do is mint the seven Lennies, okay, it will drive the market value up to about $192. So that's the difference between evolving and minting. If they just mint the seven miners, 2,850 more people, it will drive the price to the 192. Now I'm going to go and show you the, uh, hopefully my stats are still up on this page. Let me go see. Mm, I probably. Well, I have a quick question for you. Uh huh. If it's gonna, the price is going to go up every time someone buys the coin, what are we factoring in a sell off? Because we're probably going to have a few more sell offs. Well, you still remember that they're buying, but remember when I told you on that spreadsheet, everybody is selling. It's the ecosystem that stabilizes it. They're evolving, that's liquidity. So every time you're interacting with that with this project, all it's doing is adding liquidity. 90% of everything you do in this app. So while they're coming in and buying, yes, the price is going up, 
but commissions are being paid and so people are selling. So it does bring the price down and then the price goes up because there's more people buying and then people are selling. So it does come down. It's up and down just like any other exchange would be or any other token. All right. The difference is now- so You would when say by Christmas time, the price- oh, He muted himself. I yeah, know. no, I muted him. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. Don't just jump in and, raise, and ask a question. That's right, let me finish here. explaining too that because it kind of cut me off there. But when you do, so you've done the minting and people have earned the commissions and they're selling. That's that's outside the ecosystem. But inside the ecosystem, now people are plugging in the miners. People are evolving. People are creating challenges. They're joining challenges. They're submitting. They're claiming. They're doing the events. They're doing the going through the arenas to get to the Hall of Fame. All the different gamification pieces. And that costs money to do. There's fees in that. And that's the liquidity. And so what it does, yes, people are buying and people are selling. But because the community is using the ecosystem for all of the features that are inside the system, it stabilizes that market value. And so the community drives it. Yes, they're selling. But they're also involved in the ecosystem. And the ecosystem is constantly funding that liquidity pool. And that's what your projects are missing. The only piece these other projects have are people buying and selling. And the community has to add the liquidity out of their own pocket. None of those projects last. 90% of all the money that comes into this project stays with the project in the form of liquidity. So every time you do something, you're in, you are involved in any part of the ecosystem, it's liquidity, 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 liquidity. It's always adding. So yes, while people are buying and selling, the ecosystem is stabilizing it. It's constantly pumping liquidity and it has to buy the move quest. So it also acts like a correction. So you've got your people who are buying and selling, but you've got the ecosystem that has to have the move quest, that has to buy it and it has to pair it and it has to add it as liquidity. That's what all your projects are missing. Now, if I wanted to be like all the other project creators that have all these, any of the games that you go and you play, even Sweatcoin, even Step In, that money just goes back to the creator. And that's why, and I don't I don't want to bring Sweatcoin in yet to that. I'm still watching that one because they've recently listed their token. I want to see what they do with theirs. Step In is a colossal failure because of it. All that money just goes back into their pocket. All of the fees that you pay, everything you do in that in that app stays with the creators of that project. It doesn't go into the form of liquidity. They have no liquidity provision. And that's why with 2 million users, they can't get past 15 cents. So this is built like a blockchain. The money stays with that project. You still, there's fees anytime you're involved in crypto, but that's the ecosystem. And that's what stabilizes that project, this project, this platform. So you know that when you're engaged in the ecosystem, it's liquidity. Otherwise, we'd be just like everybody else. You just come in, you buy, and people are selling. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. It fails. But there's an ecosystem here, a use for the token. And you are engaged in that ecosystem. Ecosystems are an economy. And that money stays with that community. And that's why it stabilizes. And the market value of the token, yeah, it's going to go up. It's going to go up a lot. But it's going to stabilize because you got an ecosystem that just keeps pumping in that liquidity. I didn't and that's why blockchains that. last. And that's why projects don't. Lynette, I didn't even get to ask you to share the, the Google Sheets on kind of the potential earnings from Lenny's. And, you know, what I mean, by the, the amount of shares. I know there's a lot of questions. I don't even know if you, if you have that. Even. Yeah, so this is one that it was based when, the, well, it's about the same right now, $97, but I'm going to add this like the other day when there was what, there was about, I don't know, $400,000 in buys and there was, I think there was only like $115,000 in sells that day. That wasn't that long ago. It was just two days ago, I think. Oop. There we go. So basically what you what we do here is if you were, this is the daily distribution. And if you're mining, these would be the equivalent of seven Lenny's. This is what the average person right now at today's market value is earning in a monthly. They're making about $77 a day, about $541 a week, about $2,300 a month. Wow. 
You see that, guys? Do you see that? Seriously? Okay, go ahead. Now, if you are mining with, let's say, eight omegas, the individual shares, I'm just going to put down eight million because that's about the average. Right. That's That would be the average that an omega is making, seven omegas, without the mining bonus and boost. So, like, You've got your, all your miners have got elements and attributes. The element is a, is a mining boost 30 to 35%, unless you have lightning, it's 10%. The steps have intensity bonuses. So they can be anywhere from five to 30% uh, mining boost. And then the attributes, which are the steps, distance, calories, those all have one to 10% mining boosts. And so a miner could have more, um, more minor, more individual shares. Like today, okay, my sister, she cracked me up. She sent, or maybe it was yesterday, she had 10 million. So that's about what she's earning per month is about $7,100. She's got more powerful miners than I do. Her max mining shares are, um, yeah, her, yeah, I did that right. Okay, I was looking at my thing there. So she was getting about uh, 10, 10 million mining shares, but her miners, Max mining shares without any of the mining bonuses boosts that are that come with each NFT because each NFT is different. There's no two alike and they each have their own mining power boosts. But an average is 8 million. But she, with her boosts, gets about 10 million shares. She makes sure she maxes out every day. So she's making about $7,100 a month at the current market value, the token. And the boost, the boost is the extra attributes on your miners. So it's five percent, two percent, three percent, ten percent on each one of your miners. Yep. And Plus you can see intensity too, right, Lynette? Yep, the intensity on the steps. Yep, there's a four tier mining boost. And you know, like put it up here when there's you know when the token is at three hundred dollars. That's what she's making. Okay, is she be able to cash it out? Yeah, you know why? If that token increases to that price, that means the community has grown in size. That means there's more activity inside the ecosystem. That means there's more liquidity being added. The larger the community, the more liquidity. The smaller the community, the smaller the liquidity. So if we had a really small community of, you know, maybe we never grew past 10,000 people. The liquidity is still going to maintain itself because you still got 10,000 people that are in the ecosystem. And let's say it was... Let's say it maintained at $97 for the lifetime of this project. Everybody is still in that ecosystem every single day. They're still doing all of the activity in the ecosystem. It's still injecting all of that liquidity. And that's what you see happening right now is it stabilizing it for the size of the community, for the amount of buying, for the amount of selling, and for that larger sell-off. So it's stabilizing, it's beefing up that pool. Because it knows that there's sellers out there that'll sell, right? So it's beefing up that pool. So when he sells, it's not a big deal. So it's all algorithms. It's all math. So now you're only distributing, distributing what, 2,500 tokens. So, I mean, yep. as time goes on, it's going to be up to 5,000, right? Right. And then that number down there in the monthly mining value will, will go up. So, I mean, more people joining... And growing this isn't going to really affect that too much. No, people, okay. Once the, it's the size of the community and the ecosystem, if you had a million people in here, and I'll show you this, this is the other part of that spreadsheet that I like to use. Yeah, wait, wait till you see this. And I mean, I had one person say, what prevents a, a whale to come in and buy a million dollars worth of, of the coin and not participate in the app? I mean, he would get 10,000 tokens and be right underneath the, the other guy that has 10,000 tokens, right? Yeah, and I, I explained this to somebody the other day. Um, and it, Actually, somebody had asked, actually had called me up and said, so so-and-so told me they spent $10,000 that got them 91 move quest tokens. And he said, that's what you need to do. You just need to buy and hold because you'll make more money. She goes, is that right? And I said, well, let me put it to you this way. He could have spent $4,200. He could have had seven Omegas. He could have been mining... 74 move quests per month and in two months he would have had 144 for 4200 dollars exactly. so it's better to mine them you know yeah if you want to buy them buy them but you're mining them anyway you might as well buy your miners and just start mining it'll be a lot cheaper 
because the token is high. But I'm mm -hmm. going to go into, because I have this on a separate spreadsheet. Um, it's this one right here. So you take that same 15 uh, people. Let's see if I change this one over. Okay, it's current liquidity pool right here. I'm going to drive the market up. Okay, I'm going to say that we've got, I'm going to do this at 100. Okay, and there's the 14. Well, let's keep it cheap. We'll keep it low. I won't do it that they minted 14. They just did the seven. So this is 19,000 people, okay, in the ecosystem who just did the seven, did, just did the seven miners. If they did the 14, it would have drove the market value up closer to where Ethereum is at, probably about the four or $5,000 mark. But what this is showing you is that 19,000 people who in a token at 1384, the submission fee isn't going to be 62 cents. It's probably $20 now per miner. The average person is making crazy money, right? So you're going to spend $20 per miner to submit because these fees go up to stabilize the market. So you've got 19,000 people who are spending $20 per miner. That's seven miners. That's 2.6 million, okay? That's being spent for submissions. It's got to take half of that and buy the move quest token. And then it's going to come back and pair it to the other 1.3 million USDT. So it drives the market up again a little bit and then it pairs it and it ends up adding 3.9 million per day with 19,000 people into the ecosystem. Even if nobody is minting a miner anymore. Just 19,000 people are involved in the ecosystem. Just on the submissions alone, it's adding almost 4 million a day into the pool. Wow. Adding 1 billion a year into the pool. It's a self funding ecosystem. Even if they're selling their move quest, right, to get the AVAX to do the submission, they're still spending less to submit even if they're selling the move quest to fund their submissions and all of it goes right back into liquidity. It's like a loop. Okay. You had to sell it. You're spending it and it's looping right back into the liquidity. I mean, it doesn't affect the market. This is a self sustaining perpetual moneymaker. I mean, there's people on here Lynette, that have built teams in that big themselves. 19 right. People, I mean, we have a big community that's on fire. Um, Norman, I've seen you had your hand raised for a long time, sir. How are you? Did you have a question? Or are you just saying hi? Now, I will tell you guys this if it didn't have a liquidity provision, if 90% of this didn't stay in with the liquid, you know, with the community, it would fail just like all your other projects. This is what all your other projects are missing. You have to look at how blockchains are built. Blockchains are self-funding ecosystems. And that's why I built it this way. The money stays with the community. Love it. Learn so much right now. Uh, Sean, you got a question? Yeah, I think we answered it already. It was it was about, you know, the more people that join, would it affect the um the MQT shares to each person? Just make your pockets bigger. Yeah, and even when, you know, even at the, like, take this market value, that 1384, if I was to bring this back up, let's just say the move quest didn't increase, right? And it, and at this point, I'm going to say the global mining shares, let's say they're at 20. So let's say we double our, let's say we double our community size. So it would be 20 billion shares, let's say, okay, that are being submitted. And even at $97, you're getting less move quest. Do you see how it changed? From 1.2, it went to 1.2. So you're getting, but if you've got the double of that, then this is going to at least double. We'll say it's at one, what? We'll say 195. So it still stabilizes itself. You're still making the same amount of money, even with more people coming in, with the same amount distributed. But at that point, it's probably up now to the 3,000. Uh, move quest because it will increase back up to what it's supposed to be. So at three thousand move quest being distributed daily, it'll start to increase. But even if it's still at the twenty five hundred, it doesn't really change what you're earning. 
because if our community doubles in size, the market value of the token is going to at least double. So it stabilizes what you're earning. But when we increase the amount that's going out in submission, then obviously you're going to be making more money because it's got more being distributed. But you got it's got it's all about stabilization of the market with the liquidity. And it doesn't go up a ton, ton more, but it still goes up. Oh man. And uh, Lynette, my buddy Sadiq from down in Australia, has got a pretty big team going on. Uh, he has his hand raised. It. Sadiq, are you there? Mm -hmm. Going once, going twice. All right, lower in the hand, buddy. So that is phenomenal. Manny, uh, Yossi, you got any questions? Guys, that was, uh, I hope you learned. I get a lot of DMs and people are just going crazy about how much they learned tonight, Lynette. Yeah, but I got to show you guys one more thing because to me, this is really important when it's when you're talking about holding your token, right? For this is the type of token, you know how Bitcoin is. I don't know if you guys are like me with Bitcoin. I don't just cash out all of my Bitcoin. I live off my Bitcoin. I cash out what I need and I let the rest grow. And I still buy it when it drops and hold more. Okay. Move cost will be the exact same way. So what I want to show you here, the, the token right now with the community size, you're getting about with the seven omegas. Let's say this is the average 2.9, right? Move cost per day. Now, when this doubles in community size, and we'll say it's going to be the 20 billion mining shares global, do you see how that drops? That's not the one? current, because you have it at 3,000. Oh, yeah, let me do it here. You're, thank you. Well, by that time, it would be at 3,000 when we double, but even still, let me dump this back. Oh, what happened? My spreadsheets, my numbers always do that to me. Hang on, it'll come back. It crashed. So one thing while you're waiting on that, I know there's pushback on Google. I mean, because that's the bathroom wall of freaking the internet. And anything that says negative things about this project or you, do you have any pushback for people in, in here or on, you know, on watching the replay about anything about stuff? Okay. Not being you real? know what? I cannot control what anybody says and they don't understand the project. I have, you know what, you've got so many self-proclaimed crypto experts out there or people that think they're going to, you know, review something or critique it. They don't even have a clue what they're talking about. So honestly, I just ignore them because I don't care what they've got to say. Anybody can say whatever they want, but until they come in and actually look at what this is and understand how it was built, that it's completely managed by smart contracts and that all the money stays with the project, anything they say, I mean... I don't spend my time with them because they think they know everything anyway. And they just, it's so easy. They're going to make themselves look like fools because this isn't going anywhere. It's right here. It's going to be here beyond my lifetime. If I built it like all the other projects, yeah, their review would probably be right. But here's what happens. This is the norm. The crypto norm is that everybody creates the same type of project. They just dress it up a little different. And so they don't even do their due diligence. They just act like they know what they're talking about because all your projects 99% of them are built wrong. It's really easy to review a new project that you haven't even done your due diligence and looked at. So I really don't waste my time with them because one, they don't understand crypto and two, they haven't paid attention to the project. And I'm not going to, you know, I've, I'm busy enough already that I don't yeah. need to beat their door down to try to convince them that I know what I'm doing. They can just sit back and watch and learn. That's the way I look at it. Um, yep. They like all need to be. They'll join that. later. They'll join later. And when, you know, everybody's probably waiting for the crash and they won't see the crash, they'll join later. That's fine. Everything. Well, if you're will talking about individual people that see things like that. I mean, those people I talk to them, I'm talking about your people review it or like the ones that like to crash in on Zooms and, ah, oh, you know, um, I try to explain it if somebody wants to understand it. But if it's just somebody putting up some random review, I don't waste my time with them because they don't know what they're talking about. But if somebody is interested in the project and they don't understand it, then I do try to explain it to them. So they do understand it. But, you know, if you don't understand crypto to begin with, you're not going to understand this either until you take some time to pay attention to it. Yeah, I'll take the time and do that. But I, I don't chase down these 
crypto critics that haven't done their due diligence before they reviewed this or talked to me. You know what I mean? I thought that's what you were asking. No, no either way. I just, I just wanted to ask, you know, about pushback from negativity type stuff. And the, another so question. Let me finish, let me finish so, so Brian, real quick before I lose my train of thought. So we're talking about the 25 that are in circulation right now. And with the current global shares, it's about the 10 billion that's being submitted. You're mining with seven omegas about 2.4 or three move quests per day. So even if this doubles, this is what I'm telling people right now, it's good to hold these. If you understand what the ecosystem is going to do, you're mining more now than what you will, even though they're going to be worth more, like you, you'll make, you'll be making the same amount of money or more. But look, when you have double the people coming in, it almost cuts in half what you're mining in move quest. So if you can mine double now before it increases and you're banking those for that increase in that market value that's where you're going to really see the earlier mining days count in the what price your will be going up at that point though no? what's that the price will be going up at that point oh yeah the price will be going up because when it doubles now you're looking at like you know probably i'm just going to put 200 in here so it's simple but it's probably yes. one and then about the same so it basically stabilizes yeah. your income as well yep it stabilized your income and you're mining less same price so mining now you're getting double you know what you're getting down the road so what you're getting now if it was 2.4 what might be worth 100 today well it'd be worth 200 day will be worth 400 you know a month or two from now okay yeah so i mean hold on first, to the yeah mine. That's where you told me to hold on. That first week I made 259 or 53 MQT and it was worth $700. And then now that 253 is worth like $25,000. Yeah. That's huge. That makes so much sense. All right. I love it. I see uh, David and Sadiq, you guys have your hand raised again. Are you guys going to be able to talk or are you guys just saying hi? Yeah, I'm going to talk. Hey, oh, it's okay. David. How's it going, Brian? Good. How are you? What's up? I'm good, bro. Hey, I want to speak to one thing. You remember the first time me and you had a call with Lynette? Oh, yeah. She's your neighbor. Yeah, <laughs> she's my neighbor. And uh, <laughs> during that call, I was on the fence. I've been in other programs. And what was big to me was the integrity of the creator. Now, Lynette mentioned someone that I knew. And it's someone that I held in high regard. And I was sold. So for those that are questioning her integrity, I did at first. And when she mentioned that person, if she's hanging out with that person, then um, she's good to go for me. I love it. Sadiq, what's up, buddy? He just kind of wants to keep raising his hand. Norman keeps raising his hand, too. Are you? Is it Norman? It's Norman. Yeah. Okay. How are you, Norman? Okay. I'm in good shape for the shape of it. Good. Uh, I, well, I don't understand. If uh, there's 3,000 members of the community now, and there's 2,500 uh, tokens given out a day, then uh, not everybody in the token in the uh, community gets uh, at least one token a day. So if you Pay to come into the community and you don't get a, uh, a token what's you know uh, what's the so value the average person with all of them so we do an average analysis too let me try to bring this up real quick i don't think i'm sharing am i hang on a second no. let me go no ma'am i want to go into where i can see my stats hang on just a second and we're gonna have to wrap this up soon because i'm supposed to be sleeping here to get my eight hours. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I take these circles serious, you know. All thank right. you for your time, Linda. This has been wonderful. I hope you guys understand this and appreciate this. She's working around the clock. All right, let me share my screen. Okay. okay, let me just give you some stats real quick. So this is the last round that ended. Okay, right here. There was 10,553,402,376 shares that were Ooh. submitted that day. Okay, that was 3,289 submissions. 
the average person submitted 3,208,000 shares. And so the average person was mining 0.76 move quest. The average Lenny is mining 0 0.04 move quest. Okay. So this is what the average Lenny is mining. This is what from primary to Omega is mining. We already know that Omegas are getting between two and three move quests per day. But overall, the average person in this project is mining 0.76. So if you bring up your calculator and it's 0.76 times 90, I think it's $95 or something like that right now, that person is mining approximately $72 worth of move quest per day. Now, if the, if the person is mining with the Lenny miners, 0 0.04 times that by seven of those, they're mining about 0.28 with their seven Lennies times that by 95. And they're still mining $26 worth of move quests per day. And if you times that by 30, they're mining about $798 a month. And if wow. you times that by 12 months, that person with seven Lennies is mining about $10,000 a year at, at the current market value. And they've still, you know, that's seven Lennies. Now, $350 is what they would have spent to mint those miners. And they're still making... $9,500 a year, and they're contributing to the ecosystem, the same as an Omega. So they don't get a discount on submissions or claims or anything else. They pay the same as everybody else. So if they're making $26 a day and they are paying, you got to minus the $4, I think it's like $4.62, something like that to submit, they're still making $21.38 a day. And for some people, that's life-changing. That's pretty cool. Abraham, Abraham, uh, Lynette was the fastest person that has ever went from <laughs> nothing to omegas. And my, like, it was 35 minutes. He is sharp as a tack and just good at listening. And I loved it. That was the best. Yeah. Um, so, so basically right now, first of all, do you mind if people have 10 devices? Potentially you don't care, right? It doesn't harm the environment. Nope. It doesn't harm the environment because you still have to have 10 mining docks. You still have to evolve, right. you know, the miners if you want them, you still have to submit. It's, it's just right. like a person just making sure it's good by you. Um, so basically the, the, I mean, as it, the ecosystem, uh, balances itself out, your potential earnings doesn't really go up in terms of omegas, but your only discount essentially for being an early adapter is that you're, you're getting the omegas at a, a cheaper price than potentially be worth in the future. Well, yeah, everything is cheaper right now because of the size of the community and the market value of the token. So everything will keep increasing. So there's a lot of reason to, you know, come in sooner as far as like, you know, you're going to get more of the move quest, you know, you're in when the token is, you know, still smaller, but it doesn't hurt. You know, it's still like, there's never a, a bad time to get started, even if the token is you know, a thousand dollars because you're still mining that token every day and you're still contributing right. to the ecosystem. You're still, you're still getting that ROI, but your income is capped essentially based on the way the ecosystem works. Well, it's, yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know if capped is capped, right. but it, 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 it stays at around the same. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you're basically finding a way for every individual to make a good return on their investment through your program that you've created. Well, it, you're to, in two ways, yes. The market stabilizes itself with the liquidity, right, based on the community size. So if it's just stabilizing and nobody is minting the miners and coming into the ecosystem, it's stabilizing that revenue that you're earning to kind of keep it that stable mark. Right. But if it's still growing and there's still people coming into the ecosystem, no, what you're going to make is going to keep going up and up and up. And up that's and if up. you're like, holding. So that's what you're telling people to hold, and well, that's a potential upside. Not, no, even if you're not holding, let's say you sold every single day. Let's say we got a million people in this ecosystem now, right? Now the token is, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, today you're making seventy nine hundred. If we get to that point, you're making a month seventy nine hundred. You're probably making a hundred thousand a month at that level. Like, not even kidding you. Right, because, but those are, those are big numbers that we're talking about, and we don't know, right? But I, I get what you're saying. Just giving you an example from one end to the other. Like 
I, what I'm trying to explain to you is that if you've got an ecosystem of 19,000 people and it always stays at 19,000 people, it's a stable earning. But if that if that community increases to 30,000 people, your income increases, your mining increases. If it increases to 100,000, if it increases to a million, you're not going to still be making $7,900. Right. You're going, you're, what you're mining is going to be much more valuable, even if it's only a quarter of a move quest. If a move quest is $50,000 and you're only mining a quarter of one per month, you're still mining and making more money at that level than what you are right now. So right. when you say cap your income, no, it doesn't cap it. But if it stabilizes, let's say the community size at this size right here, yeah, it stabilizes right there because now the ecosystem is just stabilizing that market. Right. And you don't have any use for high net worth individuals or uh, family, you know, buying in a high stake because you really aimed for the, for the daily users, right? They can buy the token. The thing is, is like, okay, it's like on an, a, an investment level like that, on like you would with any token. Of course, you want to buy it and you want to hold it. But if you are a high net worth investor, you're not somebody who's looking to dump it in a day anyway. You're looking at the vision and the growth of that token, obviously, to hold it. No, it's okay. absolutely something that somebody would want to do. Um, I'm saying you don't I, have a need for it. You don't need like me bringing in high net worth individuals to try oh, to buy no. It's already paid for. Everything is done. Like, you know what I mean? We're not looking for investors because it doesn't, right. it wouldn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't need have, you right now. I got it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I love it. Thank you so much. I think, uh, I mean, I don't see much more. I see Ian has his hand raised, but uh, Ian, do you, do you have another question? This is my first question of the night. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I've been up for 30 days. It's all good. Uh, all this information is so much to take in and understand it all. It's a, it's a great concept that this system is doing. Um, my question is, you were saying about uh, leasing out the Lennies later on when we le can rent them out to people. Uh, if yeah. we buy the Lennies, do we just hold them in our inventory for now? And when that leasing option comes out, we can just do it then, lease them? Yes, and the leasing will be available with the um, when we release the rebrand here in the next probably four to six weeks. And you can upgrade them too. So you'll be able to lease out any level of minor. That was my second question. If I went all the way up to Omegas and just held them till the leasing terms came out. Yep. And you okay. guys and charge what you want for them too. Just so everybody knows, like that's completely uh, managed by the owner of those miners. So you're able to rent them out for a for a fixed flat fee or a percentage, whatever you want to do. Those are your digital assets. And so obviously, like if people have the Omegas. You know, you can charge a higher fee for those, obviously. You know what I mean? Because those will be a hot commodity. So if I bought seven more Omegas right now, I can, I guess I can't mine them because I have all my seven Omegas. But if I start another wallet right now to mine them, and then when the leasing comes out, can I undock them and then mine, uh, lease them out after? You can. Yes, you can. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. And uh, I see that question too. So like, if you're watching, like I have two phones, two phones, I have two watches. Um, I ha I'm using two different MetaMask wallets on the same MetaMask. So I can use my MetaMask and then use my wallet, attach it to this other phone and this other watch. And that's how I use it. I can put a watch on my daughter. You know what I mean? You can control all of it from one MetaMask, but I've seen people have seven watches on their arms and seven phones in their pocket. So, I mean, you can mine as much as you want. You are the miner. You just can't have multiple accounts on one phone because you can only have one health system set up on your phone and one app. And each device has to, uh, like, you, it's not the wallet that's doing the mining, right? It's the actual... It's that NFT miner connected to that device because if we allowed, you know, multiple docks, let's say, okay, I can just use this wallet. I'll undock, not undock, but I'll um, disconnect this wallet, reconnect another wallet, and have a dock in there. It wouldn't uh, contribute to the ecosystem like it needs to. And that's why you have to have the separate devices. 
And I, I don't know, I did get asked, like, can you use an iPad touch screen? Nope, so, it doesn't work on tablets. Okay. And it's got something to do with a tracker. I mean, we would allow it if it would let it, but uh, fitness trackers, for whatever reason, you know, because it has to, it doesn't pick it up. Now, maybe with a watch it would, I'd have to talk to my dev team, but I don't think so. Not the I tablet, the uh, iPad touches. You know, like they used to have just the iPad on the same same look as the phone, but they have the health app on it. I'll have to check and see. That's a good question. I know I can't use my iPad, but maybe you could that. I'll find out. I don't think so, though, but I'll find out. I was figuring you could do the health tracking, and then when you connect to Wi-Fi, it will upload the information. Possibly. That's a, yeah, it's a good question. I'll ask my devs if that's a possibility. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Well, okay. I have another question. So well, let's say one person is a couch potato and he gets up a few times a day to go to the bathroom and to eat. Another person um, is um, a, a marathon runner and he's uh, practicing all day long or he's riding his bicycle or whatever. That second guy is going to make a do a mine a lot more than the uh, couch potato. But will the couch potato you know, have a, a decent uh, ROI. So I don't know, because I, let's see, let me put it to you like this. I don't like to consider myself a couch potato, but there's some days I don't get very much movement in because I'm locked to a computer. So the other day, I don't know what constitute, what type of movement you were talking. So I'm going to go in because I'm going to tell you, I had a couple of really low days and I'm mining with an Omega. Well, let's put it this way. I was shocked, actually. I said I would make $42. So I had um, 25. Yes. Okay. So today I got 2,500 steps in, which is absolutely terrible. So it gave me 1,271,000 mining shares. Is So 2,500, is that, would that be considered couch potato? Or is that too high still? I would think oh, that's, that's good a stuff. lower one. Here's one where I only had... Uh, 1,500 steps. And this was uh, about, let's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days ago, I mined 0.46 move class. So that would be what, 0.46? You know, to Norman, I'm sure you can give some dollars to do some walking around for you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I used to walk for an hour every day and I started getting arthritis by me. And the doctor said you can't walk. Um, so I said I'm going to water aerobics, but I don't carry my phone in the pool. <laughs> One thing too is like I have watches on. I don't have them right now because I hit my goal, and uh, I put them on my arms and I do this because I'm on zooms a lot. So I move my arms and I have a watch and it registers like I'm running in place. You know, you can do this right. So get a watch and do that part if you can't walk. I mean, people in a wheelchair are moving their arms. So, I mean, they can, they don't have to walk and get steps. They can just move their arms with the watches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you could get a, no. if there's watches. You could pick a watch up for 40, 50 bucks, a fitness tracker that are waterproof. And you could get two hour workout in on your yogas. You could do, and that's a workout on your arms. Trust me. And get a couple of weights even, you know, and do the weights while you're moving your arms back and forth. That's physical. That's physical. I mean, you'll tire yourself out doing that. I tire myself. I get sweat. I mean, I'm on Zoom all day. I don't have Wi-Fi or sorry, I don't have LTE out around my where I live, just Wi-Fi. So I have to stay in the house to do calls and be on Zoom. So I just run in place. And it's a lot of work. So you know, she knows I've been on Zooms where I ran the whole time. So if you're running your hands like this, yeah. or if you're running your hands and holding a, a two pound weight and doing the same thing, are, mm -hmm. are you going to get uh, mine more? With the weights than without the weights? No, you're just going to build some. Start muscle. a workout. You would yeah. if you start a workout because that's a workout. Yep. Well, thank you, Lynette. It's 12 o'clock. We got to go, yeah. guys. I'm sorry. You would spend two hours. Uh, that was wonderful. And uh, I already know, like, this is going to explode. And this is <laughs> probably the funnest thing I've ever done. And I can, you know, as David would say, I just, I just love it, you know. I just want to say one thing, if possible. First of all, Lynette, thank you so, so much. I mean, you know, for you to take two hours of 
after going being on another Zoom and doing this for us. We really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, just one thing is that I got 10 times today, you know, over and over again. Oh, did I miss the boat? Did I miss the boat? Did I miss the boat? No. You know, everything no. that you're saying, everything that the way you explained it, um, you know, people have to realize that this just started. You didn't miss any boat. I mean, this is something that, you know, you got to just jump in and 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 watch this thing evolve and more and more people are coming in. I mean, 3000 people, that's nothing. That's nothing. I mean, it's a, you know, I mean, we're going to have hundreds of thousands of people over the next, the course of the next year. So, you know, get involved. You know in regards to that too, Manny, not to cut you off, but people have to realize you're mining the token. Okay. Is it too late to get into Bitcoin and make, you know, the huge return that you did when you bought it at a few bucks. Yeah, it's too late for that. But the people mining that Bitcoin, they're still mining that Bitcoin. It's not too late. They're still making crazy money. That's what people have to understand. You're not coming into something where you're buying the token. Yeah, you buy it to mint the miners, but you're connecting devices to your miner and you're mining that token for nothing. You know, yeah, you got to pay the fee to submit it, whatever, but you're, you're not buying it, you're mining it. And so it's never too late because you're mining it. I love it. Yeah. Right, David? I love it. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you guys do. And on the other note, I appreciate you guys just as much. So your time is just as valuable as mine. I'm nobody special. So I'm glad you guys are here because if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be taking it off the shelf. Like I tell everybody. It, ta it takes the community to make this go. So I appreciate you guys also. Thank you so much. We'll see Thank uh, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Zooms at tomorrow at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern and Zooms at uh, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern as well. You know, and uh, we'll drop those in some groups and get them to your guys' as leaders. And uh, we'll see you on those Zooms. Invite to them. And uh, you need help onboarding. We're here for you. So. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you, Lynette. And uh, we'll see you guys on Friday. Get some sleep. Or sorry, Thursday. I don't even know what day it is anymore. And get some sleep and you know, fill that circle up. It's Thursday for a minute now. Only Thank one you. minute for me. Yeah. yeah. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank Good you. Night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Shalom. Shalom. Bye-bye. <laughs>